All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you all for tuning in to tonight's episode of Eating History. Uh, I, it's our penultimate episode. A uh, lot of amazing items. I thought it turned out fantastic. And uh, we have the whole crew here uh, right now ready to rock. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, the one, the only, Old Smokey is here. What's up, buddy? Hey. How's it going? Hello, man. Good to see you. Can you hear uh, me? I can hear you. Are you hey, in like a wind tunnel? Oh, what's going on? Okay. Yeah. I can hear the train, but it's gone now, so we're good. We're okay. good. Uh, back again, Ken Knapsack is here. What's up, buddy? Hey, Smokey's alive. <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? Oh, we were worried about you last week, buddy. I'll tell you what. Uh, so Ellis, yeah. dressed in his Sunday best, is here. Here we go. I, I I share Ken's concern. Before we get into this episode, we need to know, Smokey, you wake up the next day after our broadcast from last week, and you see what? Is it an elk? Was it uh, some sort of Sasquatch? What was it? <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, well, there's some wildlife that uh, that likes to come up <laughs> on my porch, so that that's what it was. <laughs> There's I'm not, no, I'm and not buying, I'm not we'll, buying we'll the raccoon story. Right. Look, the government is trying to sell us on a raccoon, and I'm not buying <laughs> it. <laughs> and the man that missed last week uh, and missed the raccoon attack, Matt Braley's back for more. Yes. Hey, what's up, dude? What's up, everybody? I'm sorry I missed that. This sounds amazing. Yeah. It was pretty good. <laughs> yes. So here's what happened, Matt. Uh, a quick recap last week. We hear Smokey basically last week looked like he was calling from, like, a, a tunnel and he just had a mini light and it kept going in and out. And then, and it was, and it was the night after we had had the earthquake in LA. And then all of a sudden you hear this like, boom. And we're like, Oh, and he's like, do you guys hear that? And we're like, Oh God, smoke, you go inside. Just cut, we'll cut you out of the dream. Then it happened again. And he's like, Holy shit, it's a raccoon. And there was a giant raccoon that was basically trying to attack him. Last week. So yeah. Yeah. Matt, if we could paint a picture for you, if you can imagine 90 minutes into the Blair Witch project, that's exactly what the three yeah. of us were experiencing because there was just a lot of movement, a lot of shadow and a lot of noises. We had no idea what the hell was going on. It was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Picture. <laughs> When I woke up in the morning, I went to the backyard, and there was just like a, some sticks glued together, and Old Smoky Pot was hanging on it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's the case. That's the case. Well, all right. So episode number nine tonight, uh, we did Oreos through the decades. We did the, um, the fruit bar ration. We did beaver tail, and we did the Batman cereal. Um I, listen, when we when we shot the Oreo section, Amanda was at, at that episode. Felt like that was a very safe episode, um, but I thought that turned out amazing, Matt. You guys crushed that. That like it had such a cool dynamic to it. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think you guys crushed it. Uh, it's, it's not hard to do, you know. I mean, it's not hard for us to make you guys look good. You know, you guys did a good job sort of separating out those different cookies, and I think that was a really fun experiment to try to figure out like a you know, as they change the ingredients over time, how does that change the taste of a cookie? And then of course, just over time, how does that change the, t you know, the taste of a cookie? So I, I thought that was super fun. You know, I was really pumped about it. And, you know, you guys, as usual, just did an incredible job, you know, describing the tastes, describing the different flavors. And, you know, it's pretty easy for us to stick it all together at the end. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, Mark and Ken, your first time, I mean, you guys, have, I know you're big Oreo fans. Well, obviously, we get dessert almost every time we go out to lunch. So what do you guys think? Well, um, Ken, I, I, you know, I don't want to speak for both of us, but when you're growing up, Oreos are what you hope you get in your lunch bag because sometimes your mom would try to sneak in a hydrox if it was a bad work day you know or a bad work week and like she, i know what a hydrox looks like and i know what an oreo looks like so my fear with the boys eating old oreos was that they were going to turn into hydrox but it seems like ken i don't know at least to me i would be comfortable eating an oreo from as far back as the 1970s yeah i'm good with that i love oreos that much i'm gonna give it a go what was shocking to me is uh, much like when I discovered GoBots technically were released like before Transformers, Hydrox was before Oreos. Hydrox precedes yes. Oreos. What are you talking about here? But yeah, Mark, uh, I don't. Yeah, you know, if it's from the Carter administration, I'd eat that Oreo. Yeah. 
I'd, I'd love to. The, I'd love to eat an old Oreo and have a six pack of Billy beer to wash it down. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the or the, you know I think that uh, the one thing that we got from the Oreos and it came across in the episode is that when they got rid of the animal fat, they really got rid of you know like a little bit of that real flavor in there. And I mean, you're not going to get you're not going to in a brand new box of Oreos. You're not going to get that much thing. But I think over time. That loss of the animal shortening was a dynamic thing. I mean, like, I'm going back to my childhood and trying to remember the cookies I had in the 80s, the Oreos, and, like, did they yeah. taste differently? Yeah, there there was more joy with each bite for me. <laughs> uh, the doctor doesn't agree, but, yeah, I, I can see that. Well, and Oreos now, you can tell that it's not as good as it used to be. And you can tell simply because they're trying way too hard. There's chocolate cream Oreos. There's coffee cream Oreos. There's stop it. Just, okay, I was cool with double stuff because I like what you're going for there. But as soon as double stuff turned into something else, just go back to where it came. You know, like <laughs> Oreos are the best, like the best things in life, Josh and Smokey. They're simple and they should have kept it simple. I agree. I 100% agree. I mean, Amanda had no idea that Hydrox was even a thing. And I remember my grandma Makuga on my, my dad's side, she bought Hydrox one time. And I think the family like had a total revolt <laughs> that these Hydrox had even made their way into a kitchen. Matt, have you had, have you had, have you had Hydrox before? Have you yeah. guys had Hydrox? Of course yeah. I've had Hydrox. Yeah. But actually <laughs> before we started, you know, uh, doing our homework and, and, and hear what you guys had to say about it. My memory of Hydrox was, was the sort of like the blonde, the blonde sandwich cookie, right? Yeah. It was like a, I don't, I don't know, like a peanut butter or, peanut or butter wafer or something like that. I don't know. But I didn't think of it as like an Oreo, but that's just that's me. That's what I think of when I think of Hydrox is, yeah. is like the cheap Oreo. But it's not. I mean, Hydrox is its own standalone brand. But one thing we didn't talk about in the show was how much it cost them to go to kosher per oven. It was like, I think it was a million dollars per oven, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. It was like a hundred and twenty million dollars. They had hundred and twenty ovens. It took no. Up. It was it was a hundred thousand dollars an oven. Hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. I thought it was more than that. It was a hundred and fifty thousand no. per okay. oven. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. But yeah, that was uh they they were dedicated to making those Oreos. You know, kosher. They had to be kosher for whatever reason. Uh, yep. So Oreos are definitely kosher to this day. Uh, here, Brian Ward said the Hydrox, they were gold on one side and chocolate on the other were good. I remember those too, the old half and half. Yeah. The 50. Yeah. 50. <laughs> yeah. And they, and the Hydrox, uh, like, uh, looking cookie actually looked more like your grandma's doily, like a doily on a side table yeah. as yep. compared to what the Oreo looked like. Yeah. That's what I remember too. Yeah. I, I, I um, gotta say though, there's nothing better than like d doing this show has been so fun because we'll be in the office cutting this stuff together and I'm so susceptible to this food, you know, whether it's Oreos or Fritos <laughs> or Doritos, like after five minutes of hearing you guys talk about it on screen, there's like a, uh, there was like a Dwayne Reed right near our office in New York City. And I would just go down and just buy, we'd have tables of snacks in the edit and the editors would just come in and you'd be like Oreos, 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 <laughs> Doritos, 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 like whatever these guys are doing on TV, I just get cr like crazy cravings for. So busting out the Oreos and taking those around to all the editors, they would, they were so pumped and like eat <laughs> Oreos are so good. And I haven't had one in so long and gosh, never mind, you know, getting to Dunkin' in some milk. Like that is, Amazing. It's like, what a freaking treat that is. It's so simple, but it's amazing. It's funny you said that because my mom, she texted me like, I, I don't know, tonight. She's like, I, I almost bought some uh, some Pringles the other night. She's like, I wish I had now because she didn't have any. She was wanting Pringles because of the show. I so think I've we've been on Pringles since we started this show. Yeah, I think <laughs> that... The one, the one food stuff more than anything else that this show has made me hungry for is probably Pringles. Like when I saw y'all open the Pringles can, I'm like, I need to go out and get Pringles tonight. Like I haven't had a craving for Oreos, but every time I eat one, it nobody's ever had just one Oreo in their entire life. You've had at least three, oh, yes. or you're a liar. Yes. Yeah. Totally. For me, um, who knows? But you know, you guys. 
<laughs> Chris Thorne said, didn't suddenly have a craving for beaver tail tonight? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, why don't you guys talk about that tonight than anything else? <laughs> Matt, real quick, uh, there is a couple people in here that have said, I heard about a Mountain Dew segment, but it doesn't see it listed in the description. Did our Mountain Dew, uh, if people are, because we had mentioned it maybe four or five episodes ago, because there is, is that coming out on maybe a webisode? I don't want to spoil anything. Are we allowed to talk about it? Well, what I can say is that the descriptions for the episodes usually don't contain every single item that's in an episode. Okay. Um, right. okay. I wow. hope the Pepsi makes that's it. A, the Pepsi want to make it? Which one? The Pepsi. Yeah, we had a really. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil that, but I'm I'm pretty damn proud of myself for what I've done with that Pepsi. Oh, the Pepsi. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Matt yeah. doesn't seem too confident on that one. Matt, is, uh, is there any chance that like from now on, at the end of every episode, we can have like an MCU post credit scene where like they're done with their food, but then Nick Fury comes into the basement drinking a Mountain Dew and just like looks at the camera, like, and then the show ends. <laughs> I, I would I would love to have like a post credit scene in every episode where it's like ten hours later the guys in their hotel room like telling us how it really feels to be yeah because you know, that cereal legit fucked me up like, yeah. legit I imagine it, it, it started right after because we had that was like halfway through the day of filming yeah. and we still had a half a day of filming and it, it was uh I had to take a lot of breaks let's just put it that way. <laughs> I imagine yeah. being the star of eating history and eating all these old foods. It's kind of like being a running back. Like the hardest part about being a running back is not when you're playing on Sundays. It's when you wake up Monday morning. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's definitely. Well, I mean, effects. <laughs> we definitely, you know, there's definitely been episodes or whatever. Sorry to cut you off, Ken, where it's, I mean, like I'm chugging 10 bottles of water just so my system is continuously flushing things out of there because you know, those 1930s Cracker Jacks were not the greatest thing I ever put in my mouth. That's for sure. <laughs> that's what she said. Um, yeah, I, I, I want those deleted scenes, the cut scenes, the, the, the Nick, uh, the Nick Fury scenes to just be a closed bathroom door and old Smokey barfing for like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, leave me alone. <laughs> there, there is a webisode coming um, soon. Hopefully soon. I, I really hope all this stuff starts to pretty soon. Um, but specifically about tonight's episode with the Oreos, where it's about it's it's, it's a three minute webisode, but the first minute is just the guys reacting to Santa Claus's face on the Oreo tin. Yeah, <laughs> it might be like my favorite minute of the whole show and it's in this webisode, but it's just the two guys looking at Santa's face and you know talking about it. It's so good. Well, so there's so much this is a, footage that doesn't get used. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll definitely throw that out there. We have some yeah. amazing footage that just can't make the show because the show's so short. Yeah, there's some good stuff. <laughs> there's some good stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, Jesse Michael said, "What was the eating schedule like during filming?" Which Matt kind of hit on was like, you know, we're filming. I would say each item probably for about two and a half to three hours. When you say Matt, like beginning to end, and then you know, so we go through about three items a day for the most part. Yeah, I think we go through about three items a day. Once we got in the groove. Yeah. 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 Sometimes four, sometimes two, but usually averaging about three items a day. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of time. You know, these items are, we get one chance to do these items. So once we open the item, it's open. Um, once we take yeah. the food out of the item packaging, it's out. Once, you know, if there's any preparation that happens to food, we can't get it back. Um, we're not going to find another can from 1932 or whatever it might be. So we only get one shot with this stuff. Um, so we spend a lot of time, you know, hearing the guys talk about history and hearing the guys talk about the packaging and, um, and uh, yeah, then they open it and, you know, from that point on, it's a little, a little quicker. It get, yeah. It gets kind of hectic after it gets open. It's like, it, yeah. it, it's happened. It's done. It, you yeah. can't go back. Yeah. It's, it's like a roller coaster. Tick, 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 tick. And then you hit the top, and then it's straight down. I mean, yeah. it's it's real quick. So uh, name here said Oreo fun fact. After they removed the animal fat, there was a time that double stuff and other Oreos were vegan, but regular Oreos weren't. Now all Oreos are vegan. I also heard that all Oreos were vegan, but that there there was also like you know because my sister in law was a vegan for a little while, and she said that she ate a lot of Oreos. But then remember we talked about on set Matt that like we couldn't really say for sure yeah. they were vegan. Yeah. 
it's hard. It's it's really hard because it's not like these companies publish all this stuff completely. You know. Right. So, what are you What are you laughing about, Mark? What are you laughing about? You're going to thought about that. Just the way you delivered that line. Yeah, my sister in law was vegan for a little bit, and she ate a lot of Oreos. Like it's like she went <laughs> vegan just to eat more Oreos. <laughs> You claim you're vegan, so you're on the Oreo <laughs> diet now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Question, question for Matt. Since they ate three to four items a day, did Josh? He does this a lot. Did he ask for his motivations and what scene he's in? Like, <laughs> have I already had the beaver tail when I tried this uh, nose of the moose? Like, what, 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 what's my frame of mind here? Is I that, am that, method. A method. No. These guys don't. There's none of that. These guys are total professionals. You know, they're all about the history. Um, they're pumped. They always want to know how they can prepare for the next scene. Um, total professionals. They, they, you know, they never have to do that. The only time that ever comes into play is, you know, if, if we're trying to do any sort of, uh, you know, fixes after the fact or there's something I think might be funny um, that we try to pick up, something like that. But for the most part, no, it's just letting these guys know, all right, it's time to get back to work. And, you know, you have to be sleeping a lot on set is what we can you know, away a lot of hours and any a lot dark of room. He's, he's putting a jacket over his head and starting to sleep again. And Smokey will be hanging around the whole time until we're about ready to go, and then he'll go smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, Ken, bro. I mean, Ken Ken knows. Ken worked in, me, in the same office with me and had a couch in our office. And every day after lunch at about 2.30, I was like, I'm going to take a half hour nap. Don't interrupt me. And that was that. I'll never forget the day you fell asleep on that uh, that that big plastic ball <laughs> mid-watching the video. <laughs> I was on an excerpt ball laying just and just fell asleep during a shoot. Ken was like, you just fell asleep? I was like, yep. I definitely and then Josh and I almost got fired at the company meeting in New York because we fell asleep while the CEO was talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's and very I, true, too. Yeah. Yeah, been there, been there. Uh, Matt, what, there, I keep remembering like when we were shooting, cause you were, Matt, the Ken brings up the diva thing. I always said that like, put that on my reel, right? I always oh, yeah. kept saying like, hey, pull that, put it on my reel. Yes, yeah, you said that a lot. You, you said it a lot to Steve, our DP, who isn't responsible for cutting any <laughs> reels at all. Um, but I think you also did send a couple messages to Steve Lawrence, uh, you know, the, the co-EP in post who, you know, did an amazing job. Uh, I remember seeing a lot of Josh to camera saying, hey, Steve, put this on my reel. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that. Well, the, the one thing I desperately wanted, and I emailed Steve specifically about this, is, oh, and I, I don't know if we talked about this on this <laughs> show, but when we were in Michigan, I murdered, I murdered a squirrel with the SUV. I mean, I straight up ran over that thing so hard. I thought Smokey was going to start crying because he cares yeah. about animals it so was hard. Emotional and I, I was like, oh, man. Because it, it wasn't like he nudged it. He flattened it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was bad. Well, that's uh, kind of better, though. I, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a quick, yeah. quick death. Me but, ah, man. It was a dark time. Dark time <laughs> in, the, in the show. A lot of tears shed at the Mellow Mushroom that night. I think <laughs> I, it, it's just a suggestion. I mean, the show's called Eating History, Matt. So I think if either one of the guys kills an animal on the way it's, to a show, they should it's have It's Minnie Smokey. <laughs> we have, a, we have a, a, a cameo. It's Minnie Smokey in the background. Look at him. Little Smokey. Yeah, he just brought the dog out. So I told him to slide in. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Is this <laughs> Ethan? This is Alex. This is my Alex. Older, older son. That's What's up, that's Alex? Matt, and that's Josh Alex. and Ken. What's and going on, guys? What's up, man? I'm just <laughs> hanging out. Good, he just got good. home from work, dude. He like he works like uh, 10, 12 hours a day. Oh. Ah, yeah. Man. So real quick, I will just add one thing about the the squirrel massacre. So <laughs> we're we're pressed for time. Uh, I'm in the car ahead of these guys, and you know, I'm listen. I can hear what they're saying in their car, and uh, they're following us and, and talking about the Campbell's soup, you know, collection that we're driving to. And um, I have a production assistant driving our car who's, you know, local. I've not worked with her before. Nice girl. But uh, she can hear everything that's happening as well because we have them plugged through the sound system in the car. So we're driving and I'm like, watch out. There's a squirrel. Watch out. Watch out. And she like kind of doesn't see it. And then like last minute she like jerks the car 
and you know starts looking in the rear view and, and i'm looking in the rear view and we both see what happens and we're hearing it happening at the <laughs> time and so that, that about about before, but like i laugh when i'm like uncomfortable or when i feel bad so i just start laughing like i am now uh, <laughs> yeah it was rough, man. i felt so yeah. bad about that and i know i mean i know it's just a squirrel but it's just like but, <laughs> The whole scene just kind of made it that much more pronounced. I guess. It was it was literally like so we're heading to uh you know we're heading to their house and so they've got a lot of camp. Oh my god! <laughs> she was so upset and yeah. like I, you know she's like, what do we do? And I'm like, keep going. She's like, starts like looking like she's gonna pull over. And and I'm like looking at my watch. I'm like, no, you, we're not pulling over. Like you gotta what just gonna do? keep going. So you gotta just keep going. We've got to finish this day here. Yeah, we're well, not going to to the vet. Y'all should at least dedicate an episode. Like at the end yeah. of the episode, it should say like in memory of Chip or something like that. <laughs> Man, that would be a cool episode to like add that. Show a little part of that. Don't show him getting ran over, but in memory of uh, you know Chip and Squirrel. Yeah. All right. Hitman Hudson says, "R.I.P. Squirrely McSquirrel Face." Yep, that's his name. Yeah, yep. rest in peace. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things from tonight's episode was, and Matt posted on Instagram about it, and we didn't even know about it when we were shooting the episode. Was Matt's dad gave him the information that to heat up the coffee or tea, they would take a little piece of C4, light it on fire, and heat the water with C4. Wow. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that information. I, I was looking for another pop up late in the game. We, you know, we had one that we was in there before. Network wanted it swapped out. I was talking to my dad. I was like, Dad, what can you tell me about coffee in Vietnam? And he's like, Well, you know, I didn't really drink coffee when I was in Vietnam, but the guys that did would use C4 to do it. And I started looking it up and reading up on it. I'm like, Holy shit, that's you're totally right. And what's crazy too is like uh, these guys were just like issued like a pound or two of C4 each. So they're all just walking around with on their bed. in their yeah. packs. Like that to me is the craziest thing. Like I don't think they had the, you know, the greatest handle on where that C4 was going or what it was used for. But I thought that was a really cool bit of information. So yeah, my dad supplied that little factoid for us. All I think about with C4 is was uh uh John Fire. McClain rapid yes, yeah. exactly. Wrapping it and throwing it down. That's yeah. all. That's all I think. About. Yeah. Everything I ever learned about see any sort of explosives was from Die Hard. And so naturally, a bunch of us saw Die Hard. Like we all slept over at somebody's place. We watched Die Hard. The next day, we went to the, uh, the Williamsburg, Virginia Magic Shop and we asked them if they had any C4. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good stuff. Uh, that's, a, that's a no, Mark. It's, it's not going to. Um, the, uh, the, 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 um, the K ration survival packet, the our tropical survival packet. I Amanda was asking me what those tasted like, and my best comparison, which we kind of said on the show, was basically just like a very thick gumdrop, like a very kind of like, you know, more like you know something that had a little more girth than a yeah. Than a that the oil, the oils were more natural. The flavors were more natural back then. Other yeah. than that, yeah, it's pretty pretty similar. The stuff now that you get is like really artificial tasting, and I've, I the okay. older stuff they use natural oils from you know essence from oranges or cherries or whatever, so it tasted a lot better. But uh, good old yeah, that, that, that's cherry. a pretty good comparison. I I would have eaten all of those. I feel like we ate you know only a few of them, but they were the kind of things that like you know can you, you're a big candy guy. We eat a lot of candy on the afternoons. Yeah, I was just say, you know, I'll eat a Norwegian uh, flout and fluten uh, ball, and I'll be like, I don't know what it is. It's great. Uh, yeah. I, I would have taken all those jellies, jelly bars. Yeah, I even got, I they saw were... the name and I got excited. It was like, oh, jelly bar. Yeah, well, that's when that's we opened part. it. I was like, it's it's just gummy. There's it's a sick. This is awesome. Just gumdrops in a bar form. It was great. Mm. Yeah, mm. they're they're not bad. Consider, but you got to think like that's all you had. Like here's yeah. some freaking. Jelly bars. This this is all you get. This and some coffee and tea. Pretty much that. That's all you get. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I, 
DJ Old Boy, can't wait for the Eating History Christmas special. That's a great idea. And there's plenty yeah. of Christmas specific foods that a lot of people probably have in their attic with the rest of their Christmas supplies that y'all could get. That's a good Take call. being one of them. Yeah, for sure. So it'd be great to do just a holiday episode, you know, the uh, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Halloween would be a really fun one. So, oh yeah, yes. yeah. Fun holidays fun have so but, but Josh and Old Smokey have to actually go trick or treating to houses and neighborhoods. <laughs> <It'd be amazing. laughs> Oldest thing you got in there. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, my favorite part was, was the was the Batman cereal challenge. I just wish they would have had a little bit more of like how it affected me afterwards, <laughs> because that was one. <laughs> that I had some true hardcore side effects from and, and we were on set. So like, I, I kind of wish that would have been in, somewhat incorporated into it because I ate a shitload of that cereal. <laughs> there was a lot. Of I cereal. was More so than when yeah. the Batman cereal came out because I was telling the fellas before we went to air that that was like, that's the first movie based cereal that I remember coming out and trying. And I remember it it was basically like Captain Crunch and I can still taste it. And I can still, you know how you have like memory on your, like in your taste buds. I can not only taste Batman cereal, but I can still differentiate what makes that a little different than Captain Crunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? That's what's cool about, about, you know, all these different foods is it can spark that memory. If you yeah. see it on TV, just like you, you know, with the Batman cereal, you're like uh, you probably hadn't thought about that in years. Then you've seen it and you're like, mm -hmm. holy shit, I remember exactly what that tastes like. Yeah. I Again, I, and we said before, Air, my parents were such communists about cereal. We weren't allowed to have sugar cereal in our house. So anything that had any kind of like promo, like we said in there, Donkey Kong cereal came at the same time. So did the Ghostbuster cereal. There was no way my parents were going to let any of that sugar cereal in our house. And my brother and I would longingly walk down the cereal aisle at the Giant Eagle in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and just say... Ah, uh, come on! Just it's Michael Keaton. Is he's from Pittsburgh? That's our Batman. Like we, we could. It, it's his cereal. No, nope, I don't care if it's Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton can represent Cheerios later down down the line. And there is no Batman cereal in our house. And that was that. So, there yeah. we had some like really cool facts to throw out about uh, Batman too, that I thought were super interesting. I wish would have made the show because, like the craze and how that changed our. Well, it changed the whole era of superhero movies, period. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that Batman right there, and there was like so many last minute like decisions on who was going to play what role, the director, uh, everything that really shaped it into what it was and really changed a lot of history, really, because I think movies would have been different had that movie not came out the way it did. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking... I mean, he's my Batman. I said it on oh, set yeah. a billion times. My uh, Batman too, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, if Christian Bale comes walking in here with some cereal, I bet it's going to be a better discussion. <laughs> I mean, I, I I love Christian Bale as Batman, but like the Batman with uh, with from 1989, that is when we were kids, it was like the best thing ever. So yeah, he's always going to be our Batman. Michael Keaton's always going to be our Batman. And it was everywhere. In the summer of 89, you could not escape right. Batman. Yeah, Prince was all over the radio, and you saw yep. Joker logos everywhere and Batman logos. Mm -hmm. Everybody had the Batman shoes. And, like, it was it was an awesome thing to experience as an eight-year-old kid. Ken, were you, did your parents let you go see Batman? Uh, yeah, <laughs> during graduation of junior high, eighth grade, I got to go there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to see a lot. I still, still to this day, Top Gun, I, I can't see because of open mouth kissing. But uh, <laughs> eventually, um, but yeah, and I was like Josh too. We didn't have the sugary cereal. I didn't get to really partake in a lot of this, but the Batman cereal I did. Probably because my mom uh, loved Michael Keaton. We loved the movie Dream Team. I wasn't yeah. that, so that worked. That the one with Matt Madonna and them, Rosie. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell. No, that's that's a league of their own. League of their own. Yeah, okay. Dream Team was like uh, Michael Keaton had like a van full of guys from an insane yeah. asylum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen First, uh, Peter Boyle, and Christopher Lloyd. And exactly. They got lost in New York, and uh, Lorraine Bracco was his ex girlfriend. It, it, it's a great comedy. Yeah. Yeah, wow. for sure. I, I've yeah. never seen it. All right, so I got a lot of text tonight from family members and friends that were like oh no ken is back ken not ken knapsack ken albala not ken knapsack 
Ken Elbala, our final trip to Ken Elbala is my one buddy. He's like, you went to Ken's at night? I was like, yep, it was just as scary in the show as it was when we were there in person. <laughs> you better be um, careful, Josh. <laughs> he might be watching you right now, bro. <laughs> um, he don't that, live that I, far from you, man. <laughs> he does not. You're right. Yeah. Oh, only about six hours. Um, the, the the beaver tail, there's something about that consistency. I can still taste that consistency in my mouth. It, it's unlike anything I really had. Like it's like different word. than the, yeah, it's different than the, the gristle that you get on a steak. Matt, you had some, I know yeah. you did. Yeah, it was, it was, it was first. I just have to say, uh, I don't know. I don't know that I can highlight one of these messages here, but be, before I, which one do you want? From 1254. DJ Old Boy, this Benjamin Franklin is the best name for Ken that I've ever heard. He does have a Benjamin Franklin look to him, doesn't he? Kenjamin Franklin. Kenjamin Franklin. So yeah, no, the beaver tail. I've never tasted anything like that. In in the that's one of the that's one of these foods where the consistency of the food overpowers any any flavor. That could be coming totally. from it for me anyway. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't necessarily remember the flavor of it as much as the consistency. Where it was just, I've never had anything like that in my mouth before. <clears throat> it was, um, it was, it was interesting. It's just very. It's not like fatty. Like when I think of fat, I think of like stringy, gamey, like hard to chew. This was not that. This was like. This was like eating a stick of soft butter. Yeah. It, was, it was just like it it melted in your mouth, and that sounds good in a way, but it and it wasn't bad. It was just it was very very strange. Uh, Ken, if you had the choice between beaver tail or moose nose jelly, having not had either one of them, which one do you take? Because I'm eating all the beaver tail all day before I go into the jelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call me, uh, call me an eater of beaver because that's what I'll have. Um, I, uh, I, I looked, I looked down and uh, I was like doing some work or something. I thought the car and I looked down and I looked up and I thought they were eating fish. And I was like, oh, this is fine. And I text Josh. I'm like, yeah, I'll be on the stream in a second. I'm watching eat old fish. And he get he's like, rest back. He's like, that's beaver tail. And I literally was like. Oh no! I, I, what am I watching? <laughs> like, look away. It, it changed though. I changed my world perspective. Yeah. The when we when that beaver tail started whistling, all of us were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> that thing. It was like a train whistle. All of a sudden, just like, choo, choo, choo. and that that skin peeled off so easily. And you know, you you understand why Lewis and Clark's people ate it. It was just fatty calories. That's all they kind of needed. But there, it, it like. I, I, Matt, when you said what you said about it, it's kind of like if you bit into a candle, but the inside of the candle was just like it, it, that was the fat. So you went through like a really soft candle and then that soft candle kind of like glued on your mat. Like it just glued. It had this like pasty glue to it. Yeah, it was it was, it was something. None of these words should be uh, <laughs> around my food. Yeah, it was a, it was an interesting thing. I, it's it is. Josh, I hadn't thought about how much easier it was to prepare than the moose nose jelly, though. I mean, it's yeah. so easy to prepare. Yeah, but we just, got, now Ken abandoned the original plan right at the last minute, and he was like, uh, "Screw it, I'm throwing it in some flour and egg, and I'm frying it up." He was actually supposed to spend like three hours cooking that thing, and he just oh, like he? abandoned the plan. I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, what, what was the original way to cook it for three hours? Just hold it out in the sun. I don't know. <laughs> I I don't... He was supposed to slow cook it. If I'm not mistaken, he wasn't supposed to bread it. It was just supposed to be the tail. And that was it. And he just threw it in some egg and flour and was like, yeah, we're having it this way now. And I was like, oh, because <laughs> I even asked him about it in the, in, in the moment. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, I didn't think you were going to do it. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I'm, I changed the way I'm going to cook it. Because uh, Ken was good about changing yeah. everything last minute uh -huh. <laughs> really ken, good about that. the best part about ken was when we'd ask him like pretty specific questions that we thought he would have the answer for he would just say i don't know well he's a food <laughs> like, historian i mean he's written 25 books or he's been a part of 25 yeah. books yeah you ask him a question and you get the answer of i don't know 
Yeah. Just straight. I mean, just straight. I don't know. He's a legend. Kenjamin Franklin. Is, is, Ken how about this? Brian, Brian McGovern says, I wonder if platypus tail is edible. That's a really good question. I guess eating history Australia, we got to go and uh, eat some duck platypus. Well, they, they're more land-based though, right? That They spend a lot more time on land. A platypus does. They're like an, an amphibious <laughs> mammal. Bring that comment yeah. up there, uh, Josh, from Brian. I wonder if our platypus tail it's like brian's in his living room staring out to the backyard where a platypus is in the backyard he's <laughs> like i wonder if it's time <laughs> it's time for you to uh, check out buddy <laughs> uh, tail. that is amazing that's the, great the texture of that tail was like it was like a it's like a beaver tail wallet i mean yeah. the meat inside it was the weirdest thing to feel i mean it was like a kind of like a damp snake kind of i would Maybe I, yeah. I've and had snakes before, so and that bone, to that. that bone in it was like you could move it kind of like this, but you couldn't actually like bend it all the way because it like it wasn't a full bone, but like the bone went in there. It was more like it was, I don't know, it was it was like one of those like thin, you know, when like you're getting a chicken and you see like the edge of it, and it when you yeah. cook it like it's that white end part of the bone that you can kind of chew on that's what like the whole beaver tail bone part was Partly. so like when we yeah. cooked it it wasn't all that like that whole thing was not edible there was a bone running through the middle of that tail seems to me like i think the whole thing was edible after he cooked it up i think that was like cartilage in the middle that that broke down i, I could be wrong but yeah. when it had the skin on it it was super, super stiff. I just, I I imagine, I'm I imagine there's a guy at home cooking a beaver, and he's like waiting to hear what. Can I eat the whole thing or not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't remember. We only ate the outside edges. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt. Was there any? Was there any discussion of just combining the squirrel and beaver storylines? And just having the guys run over something and then cut to them eating the tail. And then, like, I could see Smokey doing a wild line, like, hey, you ran over it. You got to eat it. And then, <laughs> like, my uncle in Pittsburgh going to bar and they always ate roadkill or something like that. It's a great idea. You know, season two. Don't be surprised if you see that come back. Yeah. Oh, man. Well said, Mark. Well said. Mm -hmm. uh, well, listen, that was uh, episode nine of Eating History on History. Uh, next week, the finale, Matt. Next week, the finale. How are you feeling about it? I'm pumped. I, I think next week has some of my favorite stuff of the whole run. I, you know, I don't know how much to to give away here, but I, I'll say Pop Rocks or or a, or a relative of Pop Rocks, not Pop Rocks, but a similar yeah. product to Pop Rocks. Yeah, hey, look it up, people. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's a lot of good, good, good stuff in there as well. I, I think it's a really good episode. So. Are we are we trying some beer in this one too, Matt? Yes, you are. You're going to be trying uh, some old beer. Um, yeah, I hope that I hope the part that I like. I hope the part of it, the miraculous. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I know it's I that, about. Like, shows well on camera because that was the most insane moment of the entire show. Was what happened to that? After, Matt I mean, Matt has a, a face of like, uh oh, that doesn't make it. No, 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 it absolutely does make it. And Smokey's referring to a color. We don't want to give everything away, but there's a color changing yeah. beer. Um, yeah, color so shift. You, you, gotta, you gotta tune in for that. And I take yeah. yeah, yeah. I won't tell you anymore, but uh, yeah, it's 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 really really insane. I never have seen anything like it in my entire life. Still to this day, craziest thing I've ever seen happen in front of my eyes. I was like, what just wow. happened here? Yeah, was, yeah I can't. I can't even imagine what they're talking about, um, but it's why we tune in. Ken, I do have to ask you, um, I have a fan theory speculation because they're bringing up like a Pop Rocks-like substance, right? Yep. And then they're also asking about Mountain Dew and Pepsi. I think that they had our boys do the Pop Rocks soda challenge and it made Ken's head explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where I and and they did this in the in the an alley behind a rocket fizz in Burbank. This is <laughs> yeah, 
you guys will all have to wait and see next week on the finale of Eating History. Uh, we'll do we'll do another show afterwards as well because it, it's going to be our last one. So maybe we'll pop some champagne or something. I mean, we're still going to be in quarantine, so uh, but we'll do it from a distance. Thanks everybody for tuning in, Matt Bradley. Stay safe there in Milwaukee, buddy. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thanks. You're the best, bud. See ya. I'll have Smokey. some cool stuff this weekend, dude. I'm going to. I, I have. Uh, I've got an old Coca Cola and an old. Uh, I think it's a Michelob. It's from '76. Wow. That on my live stream. Nice, uh, and that's Saturday. Yeah, the la dude. Watch the very end of my last live stream. I left my live stream on, and I didn't realize it for like 40 minutes. And people got <laughs> to start hearing some of the uh, after effects, like of my cleanup, and like I stand there and finish my meal. And uh, I drank a really old, skunky, nasty beer that was just churning in my stomach. And I had some, <laughs> some after effects that I would have held in had I known that I was still alive. Oh, that's so great. If that tells you anything, go check that out because uh, it's probably pretty funny. I haven't watched it myself, but I've been told by other people that uh, that they heard some pretty interesting noises coming out of me. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, it, it could happen again this week. What time do you do the live stream? Uh, your time, it would be like five o'clock your time. So, uh, eat West coast time, five East coast time, like seven 45, eight o'clock. Okay. Um, yeah. that, and, uh, I just did a, I did an interview today. I know you saw that on WSB yeah, yeah. news channel three, <laughs> my local West Virginia news channel. Hopefully that garnered us some views tonight on our show. I think it, I, I think it did because right my, my family was telling me how many different people were hitting them up on Facebook because they never even knew about the show. So I think it really got the word out somewhat in West Virginia, which is kind of what my goal was to try to get on some of the local news. So uh, yeah. hopefully that, that helped us uh, out view wise tonight. Right on. All right, smoke, take care. Don't, uh, you, don't get attacked by any raccoons. Uh, we'll see you next week. Great hanging out with you guys. See y'all later. You too, bud. Later, bud. All right, boys. All right. Uh, I miss you. Everybody stay safe. Ken, we're live tomorrow, 4 p.m. for the afternoons. Uh, well, we'll talk. We got to move that up because I've got a job tomorrow where I'm hosting a singles hour online for horny singles. Yeah. What? Um, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it uh, Thursday. It's a Game of Thrones themed one. And then Monday, I'm doing one for Star Wars Day. Uh, I'm hosting this like virtual happy hour for horny singles. Trying can we, to meet can we watch? Yeah, can I come into this? What's going Mark, on? You could buy a ticket, Mark. And All right. Click, and can no. I tell you something? If yeah. it's horny Game of Thrones fans that are singles, I look like someone that bought a ticket. <laughs> you sure do, my friend. You sure do. Um, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out. Uh, Mark, you know, uh, congratulations on your new job as a sports commentator on eSports. Way to go. It was fun. I made my eSports debut, and You're I was better than Ken played. <laughs> uh, Mark, are you doing anything Friday or Saturday? Oh, God. Um, uh, <laughs> we're, doing, uh, we're doing bar trivia. <laughs> doing bar trivia Saturday. No. Okay. Um, at uh, 8 p.m. at my channel. No, I'm busy. And I'm like, Friday, I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, no, 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 I have nothing to do Friday. So that's good. <laughs> right on. So well, boys, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, boys. Be good. All right, that's it. Eating History, your after show. Uh, thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, thanks to Old Smokey and to Ken and Mark and Matt Braley for staying up late here uh tomorrow the afternoons on saturday at 6 p.m pst i'm doing a josh pretty with the kind of funny guys right here on this channel and then uh, or sorry tuesday jenna ushkowitz will be on the josh mccuga show that's at 4 p.m pacific uh stock uh mark how are you feeling about next friday i am so excited to watch anytime it's two titans of tv trivia like yourselves, it's going to be fun. But when it's something that is so near and dear to my heart as well, Seinfeld, I get to write the questions, and I'm just excited about that. Love it. Uh, next Friday, that'll be at 6 p.m. Mandelbaum. 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 And uh, we will see you guys then. Uh, when uh, We'll see you guys next channel for all kinds of fun stuff. Stay safe out there. It's way easier to be nice than it is mean. It's way easier to love than hate. So. Uh, we're all going to get this, get through this together. At least maybe you guys can find some old fruitcake and eat that out of your fridge. Uh, 